All right, here we go. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. If you're visiting with us, we're certainly glad you're here. Our pulpit minister, Perry, is away on a conference this week in, weekend in Dallas, and then he's flying out with the group from Dallas to go to Israel this next week. I count it a privilege to be able to bring this message to you this morning. I enjoy speaking to the flock. Uh, the slides on the, for the, my lesson this morning have been downloaded into your tablets and phones as you walked into the building. It is basically the Bible. It's the Word of God. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 11, 12, and 13. So I'd invite you to open up your Bibles or your tablets or your phones to Hebrews 11, 12, and 13. That's mainly where we're going to be as far as the text goes this morning. There's two main points for this lesson. Fixing your eyes on Jesus and doing the right thing. Fixing your eyes on Jesus and doing the right thing. The idea for this message came to me while I was reading the conversion of Cornelius and his family. In this story, Peter, I believe, changed as much as Cornelius did in this story. Peter basically had a revelation. In Acts chapter 10, verse 34, Peter said the following words. He said, Now I realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but he accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what's right. And so from that verse that was read during some lesson or just a thought that I had, my question was, what's the right thing to do? Where do you find that? Our, goal, our main goal in life is to fear God and to do what's right. And that's a basic concept. So where do you find the answer to this question? I was led to Hebrews 11, 12, and 13. I think it all begins with developing a great faith. When I grew up in Royal Oak, Michigan, there was a big sign above the podium that said, Faith in Action. I believe it begins with having a great faith and faith in action. So what I, what I, what I want everybody to remember is faith in action is a sign of a great faith. To have a great faith, you must have action. Hebrews chapter 11, of course, is the chapter that lists a great number of Old Testament characters and their stories about how they demonstrated their faith in God in their lives. Hebrews chapter 12, if you'll turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. This is where it starts for me. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders that's the first thing, and the sin that so easily entangles us. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out before us. And then it says, fixing your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of faith. So there's three things to develop a great faith. Throw off everything that hinders the sin that entangles you now, which means get rid of the things in life that keep you from following God. And the next, so the first action is to throw off, to get rid of. Get rid of the things that keep you from doing the right thing. Throw off the things that keep you from making good choices. The next idea is to run with perseverance, the race marked out before us. The key word is perseverance. That is, you never give up. You never give up. And we have to run. That's the next action, is to run. And there is a race marked out before us. Everyone has a marked out race of life. And the last thing is to fix your eyes on Jesus. Now this sounds pretty, pretty easy. Pretty straightforward. Pretty easy. Uh, before I go on, I want to have a conversation with the young people. So you guys can listen in if you like. I need to have a conversation with the young people. I'm concerned about your eyes. I'm concerned about your eyes. What does this mean? 
What does that mean? Okay, what that means is I'm watching you. The truth is everybody's watching you. Everybody's watching me. You're being watched right now. If you go to the office, there's 25 different cameras in this, in this building. There's a camera in the auditorium right now. There's a camera up there in that corner. There's a camera over there in that corner. You're being watched at school. You're being watched every time you go into a restaurant. You're probably being watched every time you walk into your house. But more importantly, God is watching and knows what your eyes are seeing. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 and 23, Jesus is concerned about your eyes also. He simply said this, The eye is the lamp of the body. And your, if your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your body will be full of darkness. So God is concerned about your eyes. He's concerned about what you watch. Another way to say this is the eyes are the window into your soul. If I knew where your eyes went and where they spent most of their time, that's into your soul. What are your eyes focused on most of the time? What does it mean to fix your eyes on Jesus? What does it mean to really concentrate on the Word of God? Use your eyes to read the Word of God. Use your eyes to know the teachings of Jesus. He is your master. A lot of you have become Christians already, and you've already made your promise. I will follow Jesus. Let Jesus help you see life. If you want to increase your faith, but your faith fix your eyes on Jesus. If you want to be a better student, fix your eyes on Jesus. If you want to be a better athlete, you fix your eyes on Jesus. If you want to be a better musician, you fix your eyes on Jesus. If you want to be a better son, be a better daughter, you fix your eyes on Jesus. And you can go on and on and on. So, I'm concerned about your eyes. God's concerned about your eyes. Your parents are concerned about your eyes. So the first idea is, is to fix your eyes on Jesus. Let me give you a visual of what I'm talking about. Let me give you a visual of how I'm talk, what I'm talking about. Golf is a really funny game. Golf is a, is a game that takes a lot of concentration. And my dad taught me a long time ago how to hit a golf ball. And how he told me to hit a golf ball was three things. The first thing is you keep your eye on the ball. The second thing you do is you keep your head down. So when you hit the ball, you don't follow and watch the ball. You watch the ball as it leaves the tee. And the last thing you do is you fix your eye on the ball and you follow through. In Christianity, it's the same way. This idea of fixing your eyes on Jesus and doing the right thing is the same thing. So you fix your eyes on Jesus, you keep your head down and you meditate on the Word of God, the Word of Jesus, and you follow through and do the right thing. Fix your eyes on Jesus, keep your head down and meditate on what the Word of God says, and you follow through by doing the right thing. So what's the right thing? The right thing to me is found in Hebrews chapter 13, and I'm going to pick up in verse number 1. I'm sorry, yeah, verse number 1. What's the right thing? Verse number one simply says, keep loving one another as brothers and sisters. It always starts with love, it always will, and it just always does. The first thing to do in the right thing is keep loving one another as brothers and sisters. The second thing in verse number two says, do not, show, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing, 
Some people, by doing this, some people will have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. The application for this I want to do in our assembly this morning. What is a stranger? A stranger is a person that you don't know. Look around you right now. Is there anybody that you don't know? No one should leave our congregation or our assembly as a stranger. All visitors and, and strangers should be welcomed and made to feel at home. So you this morning may very well be sitting next to an angel. Their angels may be present in our, in our midst this morning. But do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. Verse number three. Hebrews chapter 13. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were the, one of them in prison, and those who are mistreated as yourselves who are suffering. No one in our congregation is in prison because of their faith in Christ. But there are Christians in this world, there are countries in this world where there are prisoners held because of their faith and because they count themselves as being part of the body of Christ. These countries are Iran, China, North Korea, Burma, Pakistan, Vietnam, and East Africa. The key word here is as if. We need to put ourselves in other people's shoes. That's part of doing the right thing. We need to remember those and remember them, those who are in prison, as if they were one of us. Verse number four, doing the right thing. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed be kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and the sexual immoral. Not only should we honor our own marriage, but we should and, and keep it pure, but we also should honor all other marriages. That is, we to keep the beds pure of involving, not involving ourselves and in other people's lives too. So you keep your, you honor your marriage, but you honor other people's marriage too, and you don't try to mess up theirs. Verse number five, doing the right thing. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be confident, be content, sorry, be content with what you have. This is hard to do, but it's the right thing to do. Do you, love, do you love money more than God? Are you content with what you have? Doing the right thing is being free from the love of money and being content with what you have. Verse number six, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Remember your leaders. The leaders here in this text to me talks about the people that are mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11, which is the heroes of faith. Hebrews the 11, the author was basically unknown, but the text is, or the, the Hebrews letter was written to Jewish Christians. And he's asking them to remember their leaders, the leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Here are the names of the leaders in Hebrews chapter 11. These are the leaders were, that they were asked to remember. Abel. Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, Rahab, Gideon, Barak, Samson, David, Samuel, and there's a few others that are listed too. These are the, these are the leaders that were to be remembered. Now, if the book was written to us today in our in our in our culture, who was it that gave us the word of God? The leaders who give us the word of God and people that we should remember, they are the authors of the New Testament. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Here are the leaders that we should remember. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, Peter, James, Jude, and the writer of Hebrews, who is unknown. 
Verse number 9, Hebrews chapter 13. Do not be carried away by all kinds of strange teachings. Any teaching you hear anywhere must pass the Jesus test. You can, if, if you can successfully keep your eyes on Jesus and know the teachings of Jesus and understand the teachings of Jesus, live the teachings of Jesus, you will be able to understand and identify a strange teaching. So any teaching that you hear, whether it be in school, whether it be in a book you read, it must pass the Jesus test. Verse number 17 says, we have, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. We often think about this as a verse for shepherds. This speaks to me as a shepherd, that I will be held accountable and I will be judged and how, how I keep watch over the flock. And in the end, I must give an account but this also speaks to everybody else in the flock too. So as elders and shepherds, we are held accountable on our ability to lead and the direction this congregation takes. But you will be judged on your confidence you have in us. And you will be judged in, in also of how well you follow us. So it goes both ways. And then verse number 18 is the last thing that it says. Pray for us. Three words, just pray for us. So these are the list of the things, the right things to do. It starts with the word of love. It starts with love, always will, and it ends with prayer. The conclusion basically is fix your eyes on Jesus in every decision you make. Be in God's word, examining the words of God and the teachings of Jesus, and follow through by doing the right thing. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to be here this morning, and we thank you for Jesus. We, help you, we ask you to help us in fixing our eyes on Jesus and be more, more motivated to keep him in our sight, keep him in our heart, and have our eyes fixed on the Word of God sometime during every day that we live so that we will know the teachings, so we will know the Word of God. Help us to be brave enough to meditate on these things as we live our lives and to be slow and deliberate in how we make decisions. We also ask you to give us and bless us in the ability and give us the courage to make good decisions, to follow through, to do what's right. We ask that you bless us in our walk. We thank you for all the blessings that we have this day. We pray for a good journey this next week as we live for you. Thank you again for Jesus. Thank you for the spirit that lives within us. Thank you for being our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're going to sing, sing a song of invitation to anybody who wants to respond this morning, whether it be to put on your Christ in baptism or to seek prayers.